Hey guys, Jason here. Before we get started, just wanted to uh, hope that everybody out there had a safe and productive uh, hunting season. Uh, our season is over here in North Carolina. Our uh, last day is January the 1st, so we've been out for some time now. But uh, had a really good time afield. Uh, got uh, three bucks and two does. So the refrigerator and freezer are full. I was able to share some with some family. Uh, hope you guys again had a, uh, a safe time out there, had a fun time out there. Uh, to get started, I had some questions uh, during my whitetail deer pack video about uh, certain items that were left out or weren't included, things like extra ammo, uh, where's your fixed blade knife, uh, things of that nature. And the reason those are not in the deer pack video is because they're not carried in the deer pack. Um, the stuff that you see here is what I carry on my person, and the way that I decide what to carry on my person is simply... Is it something that I absolutely have to have? Is it necessary for my safety and for a successful hunt? And if the answer to that is yes, then it is carried on my person. Now I may have a backup uh, in the bag or as the case may be in the truck, but these are the things that I could go into the field with my rifle and the things I have on my person and have a successful hunt. So uh, with that said, let's get started. Um, this is a little small tool lanyard that I carry. Uh, it's a mechanics aircraft uh, key ring so that these things can be unscrewed and you can take these items off individually if you need to. Uh, also, everything is attached with these small, uh, uh, I believe they are from the Night Eyes company that you can, little small S beaners that you can unclip them each item individually if you need to have it in hand instead of on the key ring. I find this really useful because things like lights and knives and things like that are a lot easier to use when you can take them off and use them individually. So that being said, uh, this tool ring has a, this is a Phoenix LD01 AAA light. It's a very nice light. It's three modes, uh, low, medium, and high. It's been really dependable. I carry this as part of my EDC. So this keychain is actually with me all the time whether I'm going to church whether I'm hunting but at any rate I've got a small portable light here I've got a uh, Swiss Army mini champ this has been a really nice little knife uh, there's a lot of capability in here there's tweezers there's a small screwdriver um, knife blades uh, one of the things that I find most useful is this I think they call this a cuticle pusher but if you can see on the video I don't know if it's gonna focus uh, no it doesn't look like it does but uh, at any rate, the, the tip of it is a really blunt, wide tip, and this is great for making uh, adjustments to your scope. If you need something, you would use a coin or a large flat blade screwdriver. This works really well. Um, I've got a small titanium pry bar. This is made by Phil Rose Knives. Uh, this was included as a gift with one of the knives that I ordered from Phil that you'll see here in just a second. Uh, this has proven uh, immensely useful. It's very strong, very light, and uh, anything that you would use for a wedge or a pry bar, this has been really handy to have. Um, last thing on here is a length of uh, it's a paracord lanyard. Uh, there's also uh, this orange cord that's in here is not paracord, it's actually accessory cord, but it has a reflective filament woven in it, so this will actually glow um, if you shine a flashlight or something on it. And that's really handy because if somehow or another this should fall out of your pocket or you lay it down or lose it, it's really easy to come back later with a flashlight and find it because this is going to glow. So uh, just kind of a multi-purpose thing here. And this, as I said, is part of my EDC during the day and also when I go hunting. So these are kind of my basics here. Uh, the next thing, of course, is going to be just uh, truck keys and uh, keys to deer camp. I've got these on a, this is a Metalus, I believe is the way you pronounce it, but this is a, uh, one of their mini carabiners, and this is actually a climbing rated carabiner. And I would suggest that everybody that carry these, um, that carries carabiners, go ahead and get a, a climbing grade carabiner, because uh, you never know when you may need it for rigging. And also, they're not that expensive. I think I got this as a second because of a cosmetic blemish or the finish wasn't quite right, but uh, it was only about four bucks four or five dollars for a true climbing grade weight bearing carabiner and uh, I suggest that uh, that if that's the route you take that you these are great for EDC because they're small you can see compared to a, a car key they're not much bigger 
But uh, take a look at those. Uh, like I said, I've got also got one of these little lanyards. I need to make another one. This has a reflective stripe in it. Uh, so if you drop your keys, it's pretty easy to come back and find them. Plus, you got some extra cordage. Uh, as far as spare ammo goes, um, we've got a couple of magazines. My rifle is a Steyr uh, Pro Hunter that uses a detachable magazine. I also have a Seiko uh, A7 that uses a detachable mag. I'll have one in the gun and I'll have this one in my right hand cargo pocket. So with what's in the gun uh, and the spare, I've got nine rounds of ammo and really for what the kind of hunting we do, that's really about all the ammo that I need to carry at one time. You know, the truck's only a couple hundred yards away, if that so uh, I always keep a, another half box in the truck, so plenty of ammo. But as far as on my person, the reason being is because any type of magazine is susceptible to damage. And because of that, you need a spare. Because if you don't have a spare magazine, even with a bolt action rifle, if this primary mag is damaged, you've now got a single shot rifle. And that's not really a lot of fun. Uh, I've seen these things get closed in tailgates, uh, inadvertently dropped. So if your rifle uses a detachable magazine, you really need to go ahead and spend the money and get a spare and keep it with you. It's a fast way to reload your gun. It's a fairly silent way to reload your gun. So keep a spare mag with you uh, just for sake of redundancy and having spare ammo if you need it. Um, my fixed blade that I carry into the field, this is a uh, Phil Rose PSK-7. Uh, this is a new design by Phil. I'm not going to really go into a lot of detail about this. I'll do a separate review on it. But uh, this is a, a, an outstanding field knife. You can see it's uh, kind of a drop point here. It's uh, LMAX steel. I don't know if that's going to show up on the video or not, but it's made out of LMAX steel, which is one of the latest and greatest uh, powdered steels. Um, these are handmade by Phil. Uh, this is a sandblasted or bead blasted linen micarta handle, so it's got a really good grip. We had to skin some deer last day, uh, about four to be exact. This got bloody and nasty and it did not lose grip, it didn't lose purchase. Uh, it's got some nice deep uh, thumb serrations on the top to get a really good grip on it. Uh, the lanyard that Phil includes has a glow in the dark tip on it. It's also got this nice little cable or little uh, uh, paracord slider as it were to tighten this around your wrist. Uh, the sheath is a Kydex sheath that Phil also makes. This has a uh, tech lock on it. This is an excellent way to carry a knife because it's very easy to take it on and off your belt without having to re-thread this thing all the way out of your belt. It's got a backup lock on it. Phil also includes on the sheath, you can see it's got a, that is in there, good. It's got a ferrocium rod for, uh, for fire starting. Uh, Phil also makes these. It's got a nice uh, tumble finish um, handle on the end. This little small lanyard on here is actually a whistle. So you've got a lot in just this knife package, you've got a fire starter, you've got a whistle, um, we've got a knife with a glow-in-the-dark tip on it, uh, and also Phil includes this little uh, notch at the top that you would use for the for the striker to start your fires with. Um, and this has just been a super knife. Again, I'll do a, a separate review on it, but that is carried as part of my uh, my ADC. This is always with me uh, when I go in the field on my person. Uh, lastly is an iPhone, which everybody is very familiar with an iPhone. Um, this is a life proof case. Uh, I like the life proof case. It's a little bit thinner than the OtterBox series. Uh, according to life proof, it is completely waterproof. I've not tried that, but it is water resistant. I've picked it up with wet hands, bloody hands, things like that. No problems. I did notice this is coming loose here. I don't know if you can see it uh, in the vid. This is, uh, it's got a little loop here that's wanting to, to come off. But anyways, it's been a good solid, sturdy case. Uh, cell phones are good. A little tip on your cell phone when you're in the field. If you're in an area that doesn't get cell phone signal, uh, that means you can't dial out, no text messages, you just have no signal. Go in in your iPhone, put it on airplane mode. And what that does is turns off all the antennas. In other words, it turns off your your Wi-Fi, it turns off your uh, GPS, it turns off your um, cell service, and it really helps to save your battery life because if you leave this thing on in just a few hours, two, three, four hours, you can lose 50% of your capacity. And if you go into the field and you don't have one of these fully charged uh, and something should happen that you need it, uh, you can find that your battery has been drained 
and you've not done anything other than just sit there and the thing's looking for a Wi-Fi signal, it's looking for a cell signal, uh, the GPS is running, uh, all that kind of thing. So a good, a good idea is if you're somewhere where you know you're not going to be able to get signal, go ahead and switch it over to that airplane mode. You'll still be able to use your features like um, if you want to read a book on Kindle, which is what I like to do in the stand, uh, those kind of things. Uh, all that stuff still works, games, apps, all that, but it turns off those antennas which saves your battery life. Uh, the only thing that I've got that I carry that's not shown here is of course my wallet which there's no need to go into detail on that and also uh, most of the time, nearly all of the time, when I go into the woods I'm going to take my headlight that you saw in my deer pack video and that's going to be carried on my person. Uh, as I go in it's going to be on my head if it's dark and then as it gets daylight, I just put it in my shirt pocket. Uh, in the evening, uh, before I come down out of the stand, I take it out of my bag and put it in my shirt pocket so that I can find it in the darkness if I need to. So the only two things that you're not going to see here is the headlight and also the wallet. But that is kind of what I carry. Again, you can look and see that these are the absolute essentials that I need to go in the field. And because they're essential, they are carried on my person. So uh, at any rate, guys, uh, again, I appreciate you taking the time to watch my videos and subscribe to my channel. Uh, questions or, or, or comments are always appreciated. I just ask that you keep them clean. Uh, it's a family channel. I've got a little girl, and I want her to be able to watch my videos and see my channel if she wants to. And, um, yeah, that's about it. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching.